Well, hello everybody and welcome back to my workstation. I am going to be showing you how to make this little ring here, if I can get the camera to focus. It's just a really simple woven ring. All it requires is 20 gauge wire and 28 gauge wire. And for the stone, um, I'm using a six millimeter cabochon. Um, you might be able to get away with five or seven millimeter. I wouldn't go any larger or any smaller for this particular one. Um, but six millimeters needs to be a perfect size for me. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you what you need to get started. To get started, you're going to need three six inch, well, depending on the size of ring you're making. I'm going to be making a ring that's probably about six and a half. So I cut out six inches of weaving or base wires so It's 20 gauge wire. There's three of them. And then for weaving, I'm going to be using 28 gauge wire. You can use smaller or you can use thicker. Um, thicker being 26, thinner being 30. Although I find 28 gauge is really easy to begin with. And then for my cabochon, I'm just going to be using this amethyst cabochon. Um, and also, this is a great tip for those of you who have either fiddly fingers or weak fingers. Um, I had my husband grab a clamp for me at our local hardware store and it's really easy because then at that point you can just open the clamp and stick your base wires in there and then it holds it for you so i'm going to try and capture that on camera if not i'll just use my hands but um, this has been a huge um, lifesaver for me since um, my hands do get very tired after a while of weaving <laughs> And then as far as tools, you're going to need, um, I would recommend nylon pliers. They're really good for helping compress the wire as well as pushing it down. Keeps you from um, ripping off your fingernails like I've done. You're also going to need chain, chain nose pliers or flat nose pliers, uh, flesh cutters, and round nose pliers. All right, let's begin. All right, so now we have our base wires here. We're gonna grab our weaving wire and we're gonna uh, wrap it around this bottom base wire here. This one right here. And we're gonna wrap it around three times. And sometimes I like to bend the ends here and um, that'll make it easier sometimes to direct the wire down the base wires. All right, so we're going to go around three times around this bottom base wire. And three. And push it down a little bit. You can kind of see here. And now we're going to wrap around the bottom and middle base wires, like so. One time. Okay. Now we're going to wrap around the middle and top base wires, like so. You can see it here. And now we're going to wrap around this top base wire one time. Like so. So I'll repeat the pattern for you. And now we're going to go around once around this bottom base wire. Now we're going to go around the bottom and middle base wire. And then we're going to go around the middle and top base wire one time. And then one time after this around the top base wire. And we're just going to continue this pattern. And this is going to create the band of our ring. And I'm going to do this probably for about two inches worth or so. Um, I'm going to be making a ring that's probably about five and a half ring size, US ring size. So that's about two inches. And then you also have to factor in the cabochon. And then here also I'm going to use my nylon jaw, jaw pliers to uh, compress the weaving wire a little bit and uh, as well as scrunch it down. That kind of helps save on the nails. Don't know how many times that I've injured myself from that. All right, and continuing this weave and pushing down the wire as we go helps kind of keep it uniform and as you can see I'm directing the wire in front of the base wires 
and this kind of helps uh, guide the weaving wire around the base wire so you're not fighting with it so much. So down in front and around. And we're just going to continue doing that. And then scrunching down with the nylon jaw pliers and compressing the wire kind of helps hold it in place. And you don't need to compress it very hard either, just enough, to, enough pressure to kind of get it to, to flatten some. Continuing to weave. Compressing the wires a little bit more. And like I said, I'm going to go about two inches worth, but um, you just need to determine um, how much you need to make the ring size and just factor in the uh, cabochon. Um, make sure you add that into the length that you are creating. All right, and at this point, I'm going to go ahead and flash forward um, to the length that we have for the uh, band, and I'll just see you on the other side and show you where we need to go from there. And as you can see, I've made it to the top here. I've marked where I needed to stop, so I'm just going to go ahead and continue weaving until I reach that line there. And I just marked it with a gel ballpoint pen that I had. You can also use Sharpie. Um, it will come off. <laughs> So uh, you can also mark it with tape, however you want to mark it, um, or you can just measure as you go, whatever is easiest for you. Um, this is just kind of giving me a visual, so that way I don't leave it too long. And I'm just going to try and untangle my weaving wire here. Just be sure to scrunch as you go. And I think I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more until I reach about where these will cover the lines. Also be aware um, if you have plated wire or some kind of coating, um, if you um, do use a pen or marker, be careful when you're scrubbing off any excess ink. Um, that might take the coating off as well. Alright, so at this point we have the band. And this is the weave from the outside of the band. This will be the inside of the band. Or you can do it the other way, whichever you prefer. Um, this is just the way I'm going to attempt to do it. And now I'm going to go ahead and cut off a long tail, probably, oh, seven, eight inches worth, maybe a little extra. Um, this is going to be used to uh, create a platform for the cabochon as well as some more weaving in the end. So just make sure you have extra. Nine inches, ten inches is great. And I'm going to go ahead and cut this piece here. And then I'm going to tuck it in with my chain nose pliers. All right, and at this point, I do have a ring mandrel that I'm going to use. I got it, I believe, at Michael's, but you can find it online as well. I do prefer the one that's round all the way around. And um, we're going to go ahead and find what's the inside and wrap that around, the inside band around the mandrel like so. And we're just going to intersect a little, well, not intersect, more like go parallel with these top wires. As you can see here, and that center section I'm going to be using to make the platform for the cabochon. So I'm going to try and get that to be about the same size as the diameter of the cabochon. So I'm just going to tighten that a little bit. And remember that the ring band will stretch a little bit too. I usually hammer it around the mandrel, so keep that in mind as well. It usually stretches about a quarter of a ring size. Now I'm going to use my nylon jaw pliers and I'm going to flatten here. And flatten the top over here, as you can see. And this is what's going to be kind of the platform for my cabochon. And like I said, don't use a too much pressure, just enough to kind of get the wires flat. And I'm going to pull that in a little bit. Like so. All right, now I'm going to grab my cabochon and I'm going to check the size to see how well it fits there. All right, and see, it fits pretty well, so I, I think I like where it's at. 
from here, we're going to go ahead and take this long weaving wire that we left and wrap it over the top. And then we're going to direct it under, well, underneath the top through the band, like so. And then we're going to take it and wrap it. I'm going to take it and wrap it around this bottom base wire here, like so. And that's going to kind of secure that there for us. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go over the top through the band. And then we're going to scrunch it down just a tad, make sure that's kind of tight. And then we're going to pull it um, or wrap it around that bottom base wire. And that's going to kind of hold it secure. And be sure when you're um, wrapping it around the top and through the wire or the uh, band that you're not pulling it so tight that it's going to cause the wires to kind of crisscross. We want to keep them... Um, next to each other and but firm in place so we don't want them to um, be bunched up in there and just continuing to create that platform and we're going to go around this bottom base wire and i'm going to use my nylon jaw pliers to kind of um, compress that a little bit i'm just trying to keep these wires even it's okay to have spaces between them um, as there, it, it's kind of its own little weave in there. So, and coming through the band, and then around that bottom base wire over the top, and we're just going to continue doing this um, until we kind of get a platform for the cabochon. All right, and now that we're going ahead and finishing up this little weave, um, I just wrapped around the bottom base wire a couple more times to secure this wire. And now we're just kind of um, adjusting these, make sure they're somewhat even and pulling it tight so there's no excess wire hanging out. Looks pretty good. And it's not quite the right ring size yet, but we'll get to that here in a minute. So I'm going to go ahead and take this wire and go ahead and cut off the excess. And you can always save that kind of wire for um, other projects later down the line. I often do for um, sewing in different things. Now we got this middle base wire here, and this middle base wire, and here in the next segment, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to use these. All right, so now we got these two middle base wires, and we're going to go ahead and get them to wrap around. So we're going to kind of shape that a little bit, and in front of the opposite side um, base wires. And we're going to do the same with the other side. And this is what we're going to use to hold that cabochon in place. So right now we're just kind of forming the wires around like so, and we're going to adjust them a little bit more as we go, um, making sure that they're going to be fairly tight, but we don't want to pull them in too tight yet because we've got to fit that cabochon in there. And I'm going to go ahead and trim off um, these wires here so that way we can direct them underneath the band. And now I'm going to take my weaving wire and I'm going to go ahead and begin another weave, wrapping around this bottom base wire. I'm going to wrap around C3, scrunch down, and now we're going to go around both of them twice. So we went around the bottom base wire three times, now we're going to go around the two base wires twice. Like so, and now we're around the bottom base wire three more times. Scrunching down a little bit as we go. Don't pull, put too much tension on there. It'll just make your work more difficult. Around the two base wires twice. Now around the bottom base wire three times. So it's going to be a two, three, two, three pattern. Going around. Like so. We got three there. Wrapping around some more. Go around for the fourth time on these two base wires. And three times around the bottom base wire. And around the two base wires. Now around the bottom three or bottom base wire three times. It's five, do six, and round three times around that bottom base wire. 
like so. So that's six repetitions there. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and leave a long tail there and cut that off at about four inches. And we're going to repeat that on the other side. All right, so we've woven both sides now, about six repetitions on either side. And we're going to go ahead and trim off these little pieces here at the beginning of each of these weaves and tuck those in. I'm going to get ready to um, set the cabochon, which is my personal favorite part of this process. Now, it may be tricky to kind of get those set in. It does take some practice and takes a lot of patience, but I'm going to hope, I hope that this kind of helps you get this set in. So we're going to go ahead and take this woven piece and fold it the same way we did the uh, inner piece like so and this is going to kind of help us hold the cabochon in place while we work at getting it secured in there so this is just going to hold it on either side and we're just doing the same thing on the other side like so and go ahead and grab your cabochon and get it in place and you can widen it a little bit if you need to to kind of get it to sit in there. Um, this can be a fiddly process, but uh, just like I said, be patient about it. And it'll get set in there. And as you can see, these woven pieces are going to be holding it on either side while we work it, um, getting it secured with these inner wires. So I'm going to go ahead and take that inner wire here and kind of guide it through the band of the ring. And that's why we cut these fairly short, not too short, but just short enough. And be working with the other side as well. Um, I tend to work with them at about the same time just to keep them even and uh, put enough even pressure on the cabochon to hold it in. I'm using my chain nose pliers and just going to direct the wire through, um, kind of help um, guide it a little bit and do the same on the other side um, don't pull too tight on it uh, we don't want to do that <laughs> we want to kind of put just enough pressure on the cabochon with these wires to hold it in place and I'm just going to go ahead and flatten that a little bit just be careful when you're working with your tools you don't want to mar the wire so just be very careful with it just working to kind of get these even kind of where I like it all right so we got it kind of set where we want it it's holding the cabochon in place fairly well so I'm going to go ahead and trim this up a little bit. We just want enough to kind of tuck over the top of the band. And of course, this is going to be hidden by the woven piece. So um, don't worry about setting it too far in, but we just want to make sure it's tucked over the top of the band. So sometimes it helps kind of curl it and then tuck it like so. So that's one side. And sometimes you can uh, lift the uh, woven part once you get it secured um, and then begin to tuck that in. I'm just going to go ahead and pull this over. This is another way you can do it is just pull it over the full length and then cut and then tuck like so. And as you can see, that's holding in the cabochon nicely. And uh, now we're going to go ahead and begin working with the woven pieces. We're going to go ahead and work with this middle base wire first and then the outer base wire. So take this inner one. And I'm going to go ahead and trim that a little bit so we can wrap it through the band easier. And that was a mistake. I shouldn't have cut that outer band. I should have cut this one. Oh. All I can say is be careful of what you're cutting. <laughs> So 
So we're going to go ahead and take this middle base wire and go ahead and begin directing it through the band like we did with the previous wire. Like so. And we're also going to tuck it alongside the other one on the outer side here. So I'm going to grab my flesh nose cutters, or my flesh cutters, and we're going to trim that. And we're going to go ahead and tuck that in over the top underneath the weaving portion. I'm going to go ahead uh, and repeat that on the other side here. So we're just going to go ahead and pull it through the band like we did with the previous wire and set it next to the other one. So we're just going to go ahead and trim that off like so and uh, tuck that over the band next to the other wire. Like so. Now we're going to have these outer wires here, and this is where we take the weaving wire. And we're going to go ahead and coil that around this wire here. And then we'll bring it through the band once it's been coiled. And that's why I like to leave um, ex quite a bit of excess on the outside. I, I have a very hard time gauging how much I actually need, but for this one, probably four or five inches is good maybe six or seven it just kind of depends so now we're just going to go ahead and keep coiling and scrunching and coiling some more till we have somewhat about the even amount on either side Scratch that side a little bit. Let's go ahead and bring that uh, coiled piece uh, through the band, like so. And we're going to need to coil more on the outside, I can see. Um, but we're, this is going to be the piece that wraps around the top and then has a nice little swirl on the end. And I'm just going to go ahead and do the same on the other side here. Direct that through the band. Right, go ahead and coil a little bit more. Coil as much as you can. We're going to probably want maybe about a quarter of an inch of bare wire left at the end of this little coil here. So I'm just going to wrap probably as much as I got left on here. Um, that should leave me with just enough to curl around. Just finishing up here on the other side as well, working that around. I'm just going to go ahead and scratch that in and use my chain nose pliers to kind of wrap around the finishing pieces here, like so. Kind of scrunch it down a little bit. Bring that over the top. Same with the other side. It's being very gentle. Just using my pliers to kind of navigate that around like so. Sorry, my camera's going crazy again. Go ahead and trim off that excess to about a quarter of an inch of bare wire. Go ahead and um, compress that base wire more, a little bit more flatly against the uh, band of the ring. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab my round nose pliers and I'm going to go ahead and make a little bit of a swirl at the end of either side here. Curling the bare wire that we have here both sides I'm using my flesh or not my flesh cutters 
using my chain nose pliers, I'm going to go ahead and uh, kind of work this to compress it against the band again. Just kind of bring this over. Now this is the wire that I cut a little bit short on this other end, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, get that tucked on this side first. This one I cut a little too short, so we're just going to kind of work it until I get it to where I like it. Like so. Or not like so. Let's kind of lift it up there. And this part is just kind of up to you, um, just kind of playing with it till you get it to where you like it. I'm going to go ahead and play with this side a little bit more until I get it kind of closed in a little bit. Just make sure it's kind of tucked there flat against the band. And there you have it. There is your own wire wrapped ring wire woven ring actually. And now we're going to go ahead and work on getting this um, band kind of set and kind of give you a good glimpse of the weave there on top. And now I'm going to go ahead and grab what I forgot to mention at the beginning of the video, which was a ring mandrel. Um, this is going to give you the size of the ring, which we're about at a uh, four and a half ish <laughs> and now I'm gonna go ahead and grab my other tool I forgot to mention which was my rubber hammer uh, nylon hammer I'm just gonna go ahead and hammer around the outside a little bit like so uh, this is gonna help harden the wire so that the band isn't so malleable I'm um, just gently um, hammering around the outside here and sometimes I hammer a little bit onto the swirl um, but just lightly this isn't so lightly <laughs> but um, I'm just trying to get a good, hard band here. Last thing you want is a flimsy band. Now I'm going to use my rubber side a little bit. And this can take a minute or two of your time just to kind of get it where you want it. Um, I think that's pretty good though. And as you can see, that will adjust the size. So it's gone about a quarter of a size. And there you have your amethyst ring. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Um, you can find more of my work um, on my website. Uh, you can also find some of my pieces on Facebook and Instagram. And be sure to like and subscribe to this video if you haven't already. Um, and just kind of help spread the word. Thanks, guys.